Coming to you live from Oracle Code 2019 in San Francisco, I'm Bob Rubart with the Oracle Groundbreakers team. And in this segment, we're going to be talking about Oracle Digital Assistant and Artificial Intelligence. My guests are Suhas Ulyar and Mark Johnson. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. How does Oracle Digital Assistant differ from other digital assistants? So a lot of the other digital assistants or chatbots are what I would refer to as simple uh, question answer type digital assistants. So for instance, if I ask a question like, what's my vacation balance? I'd expect you to come back and say, you got 20 days left, yeah. right? That's all great. So for instance, uh, you know, if you ask a question like, hey, I have a newborn in my family, what should I do? Uh, a chatbot will respond back and say, oh, you need to sort of fill these forms, right? So. One is that a lot of these are basically chatbots that are singular in nature, right? So they perform a very specific action, like it knows how to answer questions about HCM, or it knows how to ask questions about ERP. Oracle Digital Assistant is one assistant that knows how to answer this question across all our applications. So what we have, think about it, you know in the old days, Bob, well not the old days, but we used to have these web pages, right? Lots of web pages. So what did we do? We built a portal. And through that portal, we were able to get to all these web pages. Yeah. So the Oracle Digital Assistant is essentially a portal to a number of different bots that allows you to take any of this question that comes from the user and is able to intelligently route it to the subject matter expert. Right, so if I ask a question today about vacation balances, it'll go to the HCM bot. If I ask a question about expenses, it'll go to the ERP bot. And so basically, it's, it's a smart router. So one is that we are different from others where we are the only ones that provide an enterprise grade digital assistant that can connect to all these different bots. The second big difference is that we have process as part of the bots. So remember I said earlier that most of the chat bots just give an answer back. But let's say if I had a question about, you know, hey, if I have a new bot in the family, what should I do? Our digital assistant will come back and say, oh, congratulations, you have a newborn. You have to fill up, uh, you may want to do some deductions on your W4 or, you know, fill up these forms. By the way, what is the name of the baby? Can I help you do that? Right? So we're able to actually complete the whole process as opposed to just give an answer and say, okay, now go do it yourself, right? It's a true assistant, right? Um, so, so, so that's sort of what really truly differentiates us. Now, beyond that, what really differentiates us is that these skills are being built by the application teams. So we have pre-trained AI models because Oracle's been the leader in data and in applications for the last 40 years. On top of that, we have applications across the board from CX to HCM to ERP. So we have a lot of data, a lot of knowledge that we've stored over the last 40 years that no other vendor can show that. And as Mark will talk about, he always keeps reminding me data is the next oil, and we have that, <laughs> right? Exactly, that's right, yes. One of the things that really differentiates enterprise-oriented uh, digital assistants from other offerings for digital assistants is that Oracle provides a framework in which the data is actually available. If uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning is the rocket engine of the future, data is the rocket fuel. You briefly described a few examples. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a somewhat more detailed use case? Sure, Bob. Today, you know, we're seeing a lot of low-hanging fruit or, or, or use cases that really delivers value in customer service, mm -hmm. right? How many times have you called a customer service phone, uh, either a call center or even chat to first be told, you're number seven in queue, please wait, <laughs> right? Um, so first is that. Even after that, you come in and say, sort of, I'm Bob, who, who are you, Bob? What do you want to know? And then you sort of describe your problem and say, oh, sorry, I can't help you. Let me pass it to this other agent who can help you who starts with, what's your first name? Right? So that's one from the user experience perspective. Yeah. But also from an enterprise perspective, what they're seeing is that the, and the reason why this happens a lot is that the human agents are so busy trying to handle all this call volume, they don't have time for Bob, right? So, so they're like, can I get, get off this call as quickly as possible? So the digital assistant basically is the first attempt of what we call human agent call deflections. Right, so the, 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 the digital assistant can handle a lot of the simple things like, hey, where's my order? How do I do returns? What time do you guys open? So it takes a lot of this call volume and is able to answer those questions. So we're seeing that as true ROI, where not only can they reduce their cost, but also provide better customer service. Uh, for example, Hermes is a, our customer in Europe uh, that's seen a 40% deflection rate in their use of the chatbots, right? Um, now, sort of very close to that is employee help desk, 
right? Whether it's for HR or for IT help desk. Oh my, how do I get email on my iOS device? You know, how do I get on the Wi-Fi? So what we're seeing is that sort of level of experience is the adoption is much more faster now in the, uh, in the, in the, in the enterprise as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where our HCM team, our service cloud team, they're all building these sort of skills out of the box, so to help employees with IT help desk skills or for employee self-service. So that's sort of where we're seeing a lot of traction right now in HCM and, and customer service, but we're not being able to see a lot of traction in the ERP cloud. So things like project management, so, so PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, they're using this because their uh, employees who are consultants are all over the place. And they want to have very quick answers like, okay, uh, when did I dodge to this project? What, how much time did I spend on this project? I want to enter my time. You know, by the time it takes for them to build a new mobile app for every project, it takes forever. So they want to use this conversational way of quickly sort of entering this. And last thing, Bob, I don't know if you know this, but we do all our expenses using the digital assistant at Oracle. I was not aware of that. Okay, actually, I can show you one later on, but you know, we basically, whether it's uh, getting an invoice from the Marriott where I stay or a hotel, I get the receipt, I take a picture, and we use AI to understand the receipt, automate do my expense, my boss gets a notification, he approves in 20 seconds, I get paid in 30 minutes. Wow. So that's, that's the difference. What we now know as Oracle Digital Assistant has been through a couple of incarnations. It's been around for a little while, but where are we in the evolution of that product? What's new with Oracle so, Digital Assistant? So this year there are two major things. One is, you know, until now, as, as, as Mark mentioned, we, we, we sort of built the platform, right? And, and we did a lot of cool work in the platform. And now it's sort of the solution that we're bringing out, right? So rather than have customers go figure out where do they get the sort of data to train the AI models, we, Oracle, are actually building that. It's coming from the application team. So today at, at Open World, pretty much at almost every application session with Steve Miranda's team, you'll hear Digital Assistant everywhere, right? And even Larry's presentation and so on and so forth. Yeah. But what's really exciting for us from a platform perspective this year is we're announcing voice capabilities within the Digital Assistant, right? Now, in the past, uh, you know, as you mentioned, we've, in, the, in the first evolution of the Digital Assistant, we had, access, we had integration with Alexa and Siri and Google Home and so on and so forth. And, but as we've been talking to our customers, they've had a little bit of hesitancy in using Alexa and Siri and Google Home as part of their employee or as part of their enterprise application mm. for the following reasons. Number one is you've heard all this news about uh, Amazon and Google listening into your conversations, right? But okay, you know, some can believe it, not believe it. Uh, if they're listening to mine, they're asleep. All right, <laughs> they haven't notified you. <laughs> um, but but no, I have seen that actually. They they do listen and, and they train the models and and you know it, it is a it's a consumer product, right? Right. But but more importantly for our customers, they need to comply with GDPR compliance with PII. So if you say, Bob, hey, I don't want my data to be stored anywhere there, and I I only remove all my data, surely they can remove the data from the uh, the digital assistant. But you're not going to remove your data from Siri, from Apple. Apple's not going to turn on and say, oh, which Bob do you want me to remove the data from? They don't care, right? Or anybody for that matter, right? But more importantly, Bob, is when there's, there's common lingo that we all talk about, but there's enterprise lingo or enterprise vocabulary, right? To give you an example, right? Uh, if I ask any of these, uh, whether I ask Alexa or Siri or Google Assistant, what's the EBITDA for Oracle? It will know what EBITDA means. Uh, now, EBITDA is a stand, industry standard term, right? But if I ask something very specific like, who's the CAD for a customer? And in Oracle, a CAD is a key account director. If you ask these uh, voice vendors, they'll say, who's the CAT, card, Canadian dollars, CAD? They don't understand KAD is CAD. Right. So how do you not only train from enterprise vocabulary, but also enable our customers to put their own TLAs or jargons into this conversation? So we we announced our own SDK, voice SDK, that can allow you to do that. So that's really exciting. And you'll see a lot of demos from Larry doing all that. But more beyond that, and this is sort of where Mark's genius comes in. Uh, Mark's, by the way, a PhD from Stanford and is one of the most well-known people in NLU in the world. Um, so I'll let him talk about that. Um, but he's been working on, so one of the things, that I, I'll say the side effect of speaking, as you realize, that you speak too much, right? <laughs> you become much more expressive, right? So if I ask you to type something versus speak, you're going to be much more expressive in your conversations as opposed to if you just are constrained with typing. So as a result, what happens is the language brings in a lot more com complex linguistic constructs. 
like you know find me the closest of something or you know um, you know show me something other than this right so we talk in much more longer sentences and much more complex, which means that we lose context. There's, it, it, the natural language processing engines today are not able to handle that. You try the Alexa, you'll get frustrated. You ask Alexa two plus two and then say add another three, it won't know what to do, <laughs> right? So, so that's where Mark and team have been working on this. I'll let him talk about that, but there's what we call deep semantic learning models that's able to understand these complex constructs and is able to parse these natural languages, but take a step uh, uh, up, uh, it's really about how do we handle a natural conversation with data as opposed to sort of forcing people down a very particular path of discussions. That's what's really exciting this year. Do you want me to jump please, in here please and say do. a little You've bit been about very the new quiet. technology? Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things that we've been doing is, is introducing the latest AI technology into the digital assistant. In particular, we've been putting in deep learning. Okay. So deep learning differs from earlier machine learning AI technology in that it's capable of tracking much greater context. So instead of just looking at dependencies between one or two or three items, deep learning's able to span oh, uh, uh, you know, tens, dozens of, of items. So this additional complexity actually, or the, the ability to track this additional complexity gives deep learning systems the ability to actually understand much, much more complex queries, and it allows the language that the digital assistant uses to be much more natural. So instead of forcing the user to speak the language that the digital assistant understands, the digital assistant can come to the user, can actually understand the user's queries, express the way that the user wants to express them. Yeah, yeah. So what are you working on lately? Well, as I said, talk by, about. <laughs> by and large that. So we, we actually have an upcoming product release okay. where, where in fact actually this deep learning technology is actually inside of the, uh, the digital assistant right now, improving what's called intent recognition. So okay. intent recognition is where you try to classify the, uh, uh, the user's request into a set of, uh, first of all, identify the domain, so which skill is actually involved, and then inside of that, inside of the skill, which particular capability, which particular intent do we have to detect? So we're using this technology to both become more sophisticated in understanding the user's intents, the user's requests, but also to simplify the development process as well. So essentially, the deep learning technology takes over a lot of the hard work. Instead of requiring the developer to enumerate all the possible ways in which intents can be expressed, the deep learning technology actually lets the developer provide really just a few sample utterances, and it generalizes in the appropriate way. So this greatly simplifies the chatbot development process. Yes, wow. exactly. Wow. And, and back That's to right. sort of what we talked about, again, data being the new oil, is how do we manufacturing, manufacture that oil? How do, how do we suck it out? And that sort of you know, utterance data doesn't exist. So as part of sort of the research we're doing, or actually now it's product, is the data manufacturing process in itself. Right? So how do, you, how, do you get, how do you crowdsource this? And we don't need to actually even go outside of Oracle. We have 140,000 employees, we can crowdsource internally. <laughs> and, and, and it's amazing because we tried that in, in less than what, a half a day, we got like 10,000 utterances in like half a day. So that sort of is sort of how we're actually creating the feel to put it into the engines that can understand that, and then working with the application teams, providing the full end-to-end -end solution. Now, a, a few minutes ago, you made a reference to uh, some, some integration between uh, Digital Assistant and uh, Amazon Echo, and I, I believe Larry Ellison demoed that right. last year. Um, does Oracle have any plans to actually produce a smart speaker of its own? I don't, I don't think we'll, I would not say never, never, but at least at this point in time, we're not planning to do a smart speaker for the following reasons. So what we're doing is we're taking this voice piece that I talked about, mm -hmm. and we're embedding that within our SDKs, so you can actually have a chat experience within your app itself, or whether it's a web app or a mobile app. So for example, all the Fusion apps, now we'll have a component with sort of a little widget on the, in, the, in the web page. Then click on it and you can talk to your apps. And now the reason we're sort of shying away from the device, at least for now, is imagine you know, you're working in an, an enterprise and you have an open sort of floor space and you have this device as everything. Like let's say Alexa, for instance, and you say, hey Alexa. And every single Alexa wakes up and says, hey, what can I do for you? 
right? And it's just going to be a nuisance. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're providing this part of your mobile app or a part of your web app where you can talk to it. Now let's say that you're like me and I work from a home office. I, I can have the response back speak to me, which is called TTS, text to speech. So there's automatic speech recognition, ASR, and text back to speech. And I can have that dual sort of mode. But if I'm in an office, I may want to turn that off. I may want to talk to it, but I don't want it to respond back. So imagine a salesperson who's in the airport, who's just finished a customer meeting, and is sort of telling the digital assistant, hey, so I met with Bob, and he's interested in the digital assistant, yeah, or I'm going to close this deal. So he basically talks to it, and it, it understands and automatically generates all the data required to go into the sales CRM. The last thing you want to say is, can I repeat that? Oh, it's 130K ARR. You, know, you don't want that information going out externally. So, so we're not sure whether sort of the smart speakers are something that will be useful in the, in the uh, I mean, maybe in an office where your executives are sitting and they want to ask a question like, hey, what's the, uh, the analytics and you know, show, me, show me the current, uh, uh, you know, how we're doing for the quota for this quarter. Maybe, yeah, it makes sense. But in an open office space, probably doesn't make sense. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Clearly a fascinating subject. You can't open a browser without seeing something about digital assistants or chatbots, so this is clearly uh, an exploding area. Thank you for watching. I'm Bob Rubart with the Oracle Groundbreakers team. Stay tuned for more from Oracle Code One 2019.